And welcome back to the Daddy Show. If you are new to the channel, we do videos on auto and home maintenance, home automation, gardening, manly maintenance, the emotional kind, not shaving, and anything else I come across that I think people will find helpful. Today's video is about getting around my queue within Home Assistant, how I set my system up, and how I got around the overhead opener not having posts to hook to from the Shelly One, as a lot of videos show. This workaround should work with any device and not just the Shelly One. It utilizes the current button on the wall, and the Shelly One is doing the button press for me instead of having to manually push the button. While pushing the button manually still works. Please make sure to test continuity across the momentary switch before soldering. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Some men rise, some men fall. Some help others to reach the top, while others stand watch. Who are we? We are the risk takers. We are the fighters. The regular everyday men, the downtrodden, and the uprisen. And this is The Daddy Show. These two pieces are a couple of wires that I spliced or that I soldered in on the control panel that's inside here. I had to take the whole thing off the wall and I'll show you a picture of that and how I soldered it. And those soldered connections come up into these and then those go back down into the wall down back behind here and into my Shelly controller in the wall. And then these wires go out to the reed sensor, the reed switch. And this is just my power that comes from an adapter that I bought. And it's just a 12 volt adapter plugged into a extension cord. And then obviously these are the two wires coming in from the garage switch. Just tuck that in there to keep it out of the way so people's hands don't hit it. And yeah, I didn't make that hole. That hole was already there, so I just used it since it was there. Otherwise, I would have put, and I still may put, two-sided tape and stick it up here so it's nice and pretty, but uh, we'll see. Right, these two wires come from the garage door opener into the circuit board and screw in on the back. These two are the ones going to the reed switch. So these come in, go to the circuit board. My soldering job from the circuit board comes up, goes into these. They come back out, in behind this, through the wall, down into the Shelly. And then that all goes up and over. To the... Two of them go to the opener, and two continue on to the reed switch over there. Alrighty, there's my magnet. The two wires coming into the reed switch, and then the magnet on this metal plate right here. Bolted to a couple of pieces of wood to space it out from this which is then bolted to the garage door. When the garage door moves, this swings up out of the way and the magnet stays in place against the wall. All right, the whole reason that I had to wire up the switch the way I did at the garage door opener on the wall is because of right here on this garage door opener, it doesn't have just the post with screws that you can just screw something into. It actually has this connector here and the voltage coming out of this is inconsistent. It was switching from four and five volts to 13 and 14 volts and 11 volts and 10 volts. It was just all over the place. And I couldn't run the Shelly switch off of the voltage coming from this. I tried to do that and it didn't work. So um, I found out that I couldn't trigger it normally and had no way to trigger it um, 
through this, through the Shelly device, so I had to go through the garage door opener on the wall, which is why I made the splice that I made, and soldered the two wires that I soldered, which I will show you what that looks like in the picture and uh, explain that in greater detail. All right. And on here I've got the red, which is a white wire with a red stripe, the white wire coming from the controller on the wall, from the garage door opener button, and then these two are the sensors at the door that sense whether or not something's in the way of the door when it's trying to close. All right, here you can see a picture of the circuit board that's inside the button that's mounted to the wall in the garage. Clearly here in the middle you can see the red and white wires that I've soldered on and in the very center there is the momentary switch and that is what gets pushed when you push the button on the wall. And here on the solder job, you can see I did the red wire on the upper, what I'm going to call the upper right, and the white wire on the lower left. If you know anything about soldering at all, um, this should be pretty easy for you. Um, please don't try this if you don't know what you're doing. And I urge you to, to know what you're doing or take it to somebody who does if, uh, if you don't feel comfortable with it. So please only do this at your own risk. What I did was I put both of the wires in a alligator clip, one at a time put some flux fluid on the wires and then I grabbed some solder and pre-soldered the wires. And then what I did is I melted the solder at the top right corner and then I let it cool a little bit and then I came back in with that wire set on top of it and I brought my soldering iron in and set it down on the wire and the connection at the same time until both melted and then I picked up really quickly trying not to overheat the board or, or overheat all the con or the components. So, and obviously I did the same thing on the left side. Really, it's just taking your time using alligator clips to hold things in place for you and just doing it correctly, so. Right, as you can see, I've got the symbol showing the garage and then the status. So this actually shows its state over here. And when I click this one, it opens up another screen. I can do up, stop, and then eventually down once it knows that it's open. And I click those here or I can just click this one here and it'll open or close. And so this is basically acting the same as pushing the button on the wall. And that's what the up and down arrows here do the up and stop, is it's basically the same as pushing the button. So you can push any of these buttons and it does the exact same thing as just pushing the button on the wall. And you don't have to necessarily hit stop to stop the door. You can hit down or up and it's still gonna stop the door because it fires off a signal to the Shelly device to push the button for you, and we're basically pushing electronically instead of manually. So I just hit this. Garage door goes up. I can push it again. It'll stop. Push it again. And you can see that it went to closed immediately as soon as the garage door closed. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Hopes to get you away from my queue so we don't have to worry about somebody else controlling our access to our own garage door. So that's all I got. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.